Hi, welcome to valuationpodcast.com, a podcast and video series about all things related to business and valuation. My name is Melissa Gregg, and I provide divorce mediation and valuation services in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, we'll discuss valuations for financial reporting with Mark Zyla. Mark is a valuation expert in Georgia, the managing director of Zyla Valuation Advisors, which is an Atlanta valuation and litigation consulting firm. Mark is also the chairman of the Standards Review Board for the International Valuation Standards Council. He also was the primary author of the education program of the AICPA and the Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors for the Certified in Entity and Intangible Asset Credential. This is the CEIV, which I believe most valuation professionals are aware of, that goes towards certifying uh, valuation experts in valuation for financial reporting purposes. And it's a fairly new credential. What we talked about at the very beginning was this credential, right? Mm -hmm. And this, you've been heavily involved in this. And this credential is the Certified in Entity and Intangible Asset Credential, the CEIV. But if we look at in in general, you know, is it necessary to work with somebody who has this credential because and or what does that credential involve? Sure. So the the genesis of this credential was concerns by regulators that there was valuation work that's being used as audit evidence that is being put on balance sheets and financial reporting. Uh, for financial reporting purposes and investors are relying on that information. So the regulators are looking at it and saying, how do we know this is right? Mm -hmm. How do we get comfortable that, that these people have the training, the education, the disciplinary mechanism, you know, if they mess up, how do we get comfortable with all this? So the profession responded to those concerns by a couple of things. They created some work streams, and under something that they refer to as a fair value quality initiative and eventually developed what what's now known as the CEIV, the Certified Entity and Tangible Evaluation. Along with that, they developed a mandatory performance framework that provides guidance to valuation specialists on how much work needs to be done so that in the public interest, if they're relying on the financial information that is in part based on valuation, outside valuations, that everyone's comfortable that it's done in a best practice kind of manner. Well, and essentially, uh, you know, I think that just to summarize is that there was, there was a lack of consistency and there was, you know, um, mm -hmm. because a lot of this, you know, we, we, we joke in the industry that it's part art and science, you know? And so I think this credential was an, in order to, and because you're, you're reporting to the investors. So if you don't have some framework, right, um, it kind of became the wild west. So I think that it was um, a helpful, but are, can people provide this service without the credential? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So there, it's helpful if, if um, an individual has that. However, if, if a person that doesn't have it, it's perfectly fine to um, perform this work. There's a little bit different process um, that they would, that would go through with the auditors um, it, as far as the auditing kind of um, uh, comfort level that the auditors have to get comfortable with the, with the, the person's expertise. But the, the, the work that we're doing under the mandatory performance framework, the best practice become a best practice where it's mandatory if you have a CEIV, but still same standard. The best practices um, of performing these valuations as promulgated by the AICPA and um, Appraisal Foundation, for example, are the same. Mm -hmm. So um, the CIV credential provides comfort that that person does, has been through with some sort of rigor, but that doesn't necessarily prohibit anyone else from doing that work. And, and a perfect example is management. It's not prohibited from management. Mm -hmm to do the work themselves if they're qualified to do that and comfortable mm -hmm. to do that um, and, and not retain an outside expert. And they may not necessarily have to have the CEIB credential. However, they're going to have to follow the same, as since it's audited, they're going to have to have the same quality mm -hmm. and same level of, of review. Mm 